Fifty year old man shot and killed in St. Catherine. The St. Catherine South Police have launched an investigation into the shooting death of a 50 year old resident of Bannister District near Old Harbour. The deceased has been identified as O'Neill Bailey of Pointy Heights Bannister Housing Scheme St. Catherine. It is reported that about 9 30 pm Friday, explosions were heard and Bailey was found dead with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. The police responded and the scene was processed and the body removed. Bailey's murder followed that of 26-year-old laborer Anthony Taylor, who was shot and killed by unknown assailants in Old Harbor St. Catherine about 2.30 a.m. on Friday. Detectives from the Old Harbor Criminal Investigations Branch are probing both matters. Taxi operator suspect injured during armed robbery. Two people, including an alleged robber, were injured and a firearm along with several wounds of ammunition seized after men reported the posing as passengers allegedly robbed a tax operator on Rossville Avenue in Kingston Saturday morning. Reports from the stadium police are that about 12.15 a.m., a tax operator was injured after three men posing as passengers boarded his taxi and proceeded to rob him. It is further reported that during the incident, a struggle ensued, which led to the tax operator and one of his attackers receiving gunshot injuries. The robbery subsequently abandoned the vehicle and the taxi driver, the report stated. The police were alerted and on their arrival, they discovered the injured tax operator and assisted him to hospital for treatment. A search of the area led to the discovery of the injured gunman and one of his accomplices. A 9mm pistol affixed with a magazine containing 11 cartridges was found. The injured suspect was transported to hospital where he is being treated under police guard and the other was taken into custody. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigation. Unidentified man killed in hit and run in St. Anne. An unidentified man died from injuries sustained after he was hit by a motor vehicle in the Landover Main Road in St. Anne on Friday evening. According to lawmen, the incident occurred about 8 p.m. It is reported that the man was hit by the motor vehicle which did not stop. The police were called to the scene and the man was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police said the bumper of the vehicle with a registration plate was found at the accident scene. According to the Road Safety Unit, St. Anne has recorded 21 road fatalities since the start of the year, compared to 19 in the corresponding period last year. Clarendon Fire Department warns against using candles in homes. Head of the Clarendon Fire Department Superintendent Horace Thomas is warning against the use of candles to eliminate housing after at least three families in the parish lost their homes to fire following the passage of Hurricane Burial. Several sections of Clarendon are still without electricity following the hurricane which passed Jamaica over a week ago. Thomas told Thursday's sitting of the Municipal Corporation that the fires at the three homes were reportedly started by candles. We responded to three house fires and it underscores the point that it's kind of counterintuitive that even during the rains, someone's house has been threatened by fire, stated Thomas. But once we lose electricity, I see persons still buying candles, and I don't know why we're still buying candles. We should be moving away from it because of the inherent dangers, he added. Stressing that there are alternatives available, Thomas recommended investing in solar power lamps, fans, and generators. Power suppliers, the Jamaica Public Service Company, announced earlier that several communities in the southern section of the parish were expected to have their electricity restored by Saturday. In the meantime, the fire chief also expressed gratitude to various stakeholders across the parish for what he described as their invaluable support in delivering essential supplies including water to affected residents. Thomas also noted the bravery of his team who reportedly rescued eight children and an adult from a flood submerged home asserting that their selfless dedication, skill and swift response averted a potential tragedy. Jamaica Council of Churches urges citizens to support relief agencies if possible following hurricane burial. With many persons still trying to recover from the impact of hurricane burial, the Jamaica Council of Churches, JCC, is encouraging citizens to support relief agencies. JCC's General Secretary, Reverend Dixon, says through the state has activated several hurricane response efforts, Jamaicans must seek to provide assistance where necessary on a personal level. 
he points out that the aid is not limited to monetary resources. Reverend Dixon says committee members should also work together to help vulnerable persons. We have to appreciate the fact that the state has agencies that are involved in relief work and reconstruction and restoration. And to the extent that we are able to support them, we should, whether it is by heeding instructions or supporting initiatives or in some cases just staying out of the way, we should. Um, but I think there's a, a, another level at which we care for each other and it is, it is through relief agencies that will ask for donations, that will ask for us to volunteer our time and our, our resources. Those are very important and I think every Jamaican who has any way with our support agencies like these should do so. All of us did not suffer the same level of impact from the hurricane. And I am one of those persons who, living in Kingston, barely had any hurricane impact in my neighborhood. But there are so many persons who could do with a word of comfort, a visit, a little care package. If we take the time to think about what it is that we can take from our storehouses and our pantries and our closet to give to somebody who is desperately in need. I look at the devastation in St. Elizabeth and Clarendon and Manchester and I realize that the state alone and the relief agencies alone will not get everybody back on their feet in the shortest possible time. It's going to take an effort that involves all of these levels, particularly the level of the neighbor, the level of the, the human being reaching out to the humanity of another person and taking care of them and supporting them and probably even taking some people in to your home for a short while. Give them some space to breathe and to sort of collect their thoughts and formulate plans on how to restart. JPS Foundation Food for the Poor provide post-hurricane relief to St. Elizabeth residents. The Jamaica Public Service JPS Foundation and Food for the Poor Jamaica have partnered to provide much-needed relief in St. Elizabeth following the passage of Hurricane Beryl. St. Elizabeth is one of the hardest hit parishes from the hurricane. It suffered extensive damage to residential and commercial buildings, as well as critical Jamaica Public Service infrastructure, a release on Saturday stated. Sophia Lewis said of the JPS Foundation, detailed the scope of the joint effort. Our immediate response is the provision of care packages and access to charging stations to assist residents in their day-to-day -day lives until the full assessment of the specific needs of the community are ascertained, Lewis stated. The support is multi-pronged and will be ongoing as we help the breadbasket parish bounce back from what we can only be described as a devastating circumstances, she added. JPS Foundation and Food for the Poor Jamaica said that once care packages will cover the basics to include non-perishable food items, distribution of water and ice across the parish, sanitary items and tarpaulins, they are contemplating solutions for displaced residents whose properties would have been severely damaged by the strong winds and rains associated with the Category 4 storm. Sylvia Stevens, Executive Director for Food for the Poor Jamaica, made the disclosure as the teams distributed aids in Parity, Flagerman, and Bosavan in St. Elizabeth on Wednesday. It is never a simple fix when one has been uprooted from the place they call home. More than the principal loss, it is an emotional roller coaster. Watching years of memories go down the drain or, in some cases, go with the wind, she stated. It will take a lot more hands on deck to help the people of St. Elizabeth get back on their feet. It is for this reason that we extend sincere thanks to the JPS Foundation for helping to restore hope as their dedicated themes continue working to restore electricity and while Severa added. JPS aid will also extend to the Foundation's offering of educational grants to students in the parish for the academic year. 2024-2025, the release stated. The aftermath of the Category 4 hurricane saw several residents plunge into darkness as floodwaters and winds ripped through JPS lines and toppled poles to the parish. The utility company has since begun restoration electricity to parts of St. Elizabeth. Prime Minister says robust system in place for procurement of housing contracts. Prime Minister Anjohone says the government has a very robust system to ensure transparency and accountability in the award of infrastructure contracts, particularly in housing. Speaking on Friday at the handing over of a social housing unit in Hanover, Holness said all government contracts and services must be subject to a rules-based process and systems of laws which are independent of political interference. 
None of these contracts are just hand over to anyone to build a house. There is a sense among many persons in Jamaica that government can take up works contract and say, my friend, here you go. That may have been seen in cases 20 or 30 years ago, but that is certainly not the case today. Everything goes through a competitive process, a rules-based process only stated. The Prime Minister declared that political interference should not take place in the process. There are persons who keep making demands on Member of Parliament, on government officials saying, I want a contract, I should get a contract, and it is not so. It cannot be so, it is illegal. And if any Member of Parliament, any public official gets involved with the giving out of contract that is on the basis for criminal prosecution. I want to make that absolutely clear. Public officials, particularly elected representatives, have absolutely no involvement in the vetting or the procurement process for contracts. That is absolutely off-limits declared wholeness. More than 286 units under the new social housing program has been built with approximately 230 handed over to beneficiaries who go through a rigorous process to verify the need he stated. Wholeness says, having established the standards of housing units to be built, the government will now seek to partner with other organizations such as Food for the Poor to speed up delivery to expand and speed up deliveries of units. An estimated 6,000 housing units are needed to address chronic housing issues from those in greatest needs. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.